um, function notation. And all function notation is, is another way of uh, saying y equals mx plus b. So basically, we replace y with what we call f of x. So basically, f of x, you're writing please, is another name for y. And the way we say it is we say the value of f at x. Or we also say simply f of x. The value of f at x, meaning the value of the function at x equals this value, or f of x. Uh, it does not mean, write this down because every year I have kids do this, does not mean f times x. This does not mean f times x equals mx plus b. All right, so let's look at number one. Number one says, what is the value of the function of f of x equals 3x minus 15 when x equals negative 3? This is also known as finding f of negative 3. All you're going to do is plug in negative 3 for x. So I could say that f of negative 3 equals 3 times negative 3 minus 15. All I'm doing is I'm plugging in negative 3 for this x. Over here, this, this is just notation. I'm not actually multiplying those together. I'm just saying the value of f of, ne f of x at negative 3. Multiply these together to get negative 9. f of negative 3 is negative 24. That part is our answer. If you had changed it to y, you would have gotten, uh, we would have said that, what is the value of y when x is negative 3? Something like that. The only difference is in the notation is that we're, we're, we're going to talk about in terms of a function. All right, let's do number two. For the function f of x equals 2x minus 10, find the value of x so that f of x equals 6. This time we're going backwards. This is as if I don't know my x and my y is 6. We know f of x is equal to 6, so I'm going to replace f of x with 6. And this time solve for x. Add 10 to each side. Divide out the 2 is 8. This is our answer. We could also think of it uh, like this, that f of 8 equals 6. Meaning when we plug in 8 for x, the result is 6. All right, now in number 3, we have two facts. The first fact is that f of 6 is negative 1, meaning when we plug in 6, the result is negative 1. And when we plug in negative 2, the result is 3. Can you guys see how uh, these two bits of information will, would yield us two coordinates? If we plug in 6 for x, the result is negative 1. What variable is normally the, the result? Gabby? Y. The y. So that means if I plug in 6, the result is negative 1. There's a coordinate. If I plug in negative 2, the result, the value of f of x is 3. There's another coordinate. That's all we need to know to find the slope. All right, so change in y, 3 minus negative 1 becomes 3 plus 1 over negative 2 minus 6. 4 over negative 8 reduces 1, negative 1 half. All right, turn it over. All right, so number four is more like the first one we did. If f of x equals 2x plus 1, find f of negative 2. 
meaning plug negative 2 in right here. So that would be 2 times negative 2 plus 1. Negative 4 plus 1. Negative 3. So we could say f of negative 2 equals negative 3. This is our answer. Questions? Yes, Lauren. Because we have two different ways of, of talking or speaking about uh, linear equations. We could, talk, we could speak of them in terms of y, or we could speak of them in terms of f of x. Um, in future math classes, you're going to see this much more often. We're just exposing to it to you now earlier. Uh, it doesn't have to be f of x. It could be g of x. It could be k of x. It could be l of x. They use all sorts of letters. So the next one is g of x equals 2x squared minus 4x. They want you to find g of negative 1, meaning plug in negative 1 for x. So I'm going to say 2 times negative 1 squared minus 4 times negative 1. Remember what we learned from the first unit. When you are evaluating an expression for a number, replace each variable with parentheses. That way you won't make a mistake when you're um, simplifying. Negative 1 squared is positive 1 times 2 is 2. Uh, minus negative 4, so we get 6. We could say that g of negative 1 equals 6. Now, so basically this is just another way um, of telling you how to plug something in, based finding the value of the function at a certain value of x. Well, now we have two functions, and we're going to put them together, okay? We know that f of x is equal to 2x, and that g of x is equal to x minus 1. They want you to find g of f of negative 2. g of f of negative 2. What you're going to do is start from the inside and work your way out. Start at inside. Meaning the first thing I'm going to do is find f of negative 2. Well, f of negative 2 would be using this function here. f of negative 2 would equal 2 times negative 2, which is what? Negative 4. Now, because we're not just trying to find f of negative 2, we're trying to find g of f of negative 2, we plug our result, plug our result, into outer function. The outer function is g of x. So if f of negative 2 is negative 4, then we're going to now find g of negative 4, which would equal negative 4, plugging it in for this x, minus 1. Negative 4 minus 1 is equal to negative 5. Therefore, that's our answer. We could also write it like this. g of f of negative 2 equals negative 5. Combining functions. We shouldn't worry too much because really all, all you have to do is add, subtract, and multiply, plugging numbers in. Uh, you just have to get used to the new notation. We're going to do one more together. It's the same type. This one wants us to find f of g of negative 2, but we have different functions. So uh, we have to start at the inside. So are we going to start with f of x or g of x? G. g of x. So we'll start with 3 times negative 2 plus 4. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. Now we're going to plug our result into the outer function, which is f of x. So f of negative 2, and it's just a coincidence uh, that they're the same, you guys. It's a coincidence that our result here was the same as what we were plugging in. Up here it was different. Remember, we originally plugged in negative 2, and then we plugged in negative 4 for the second one. This is just a coincidence. So then f of negative 2 uh, would be negative 2 quantity squared 
which is 4. So f of g of negative 2 equals positive 4. Uh, another bit of terminology you need to know is the domain and range. The domain are the values of x for which the function is divine. And the range are, is the value of f of x, or y, the y values, uh, where x is in the domain of f. And then when you graph it, if you were to make a table of values, normally we make a table f, x, and y. This table instead would be x comma f of x. Remember, f of x is just another way of saying y. All right, nice job.